It's Monday, September 9. Good afternoon. I'm Herman Green with your Midday News. If you're watching online on onespotmedia.com, a very special welcome to you. Thanks for joining us. Members of the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, PSTEP, were out in their numbers this morning in an effort to facilitate a smooth flow of traffic with the official reopening of all schools. But as you'll hear in this report, back to school is not the only thing that caused traffic hiccups in the corporate area. TVJ's O'Shane Masters has the details. Monday marks the official start of a new school year, and with that comes a traffic nightmare. This is what the Hagley Park Main Road in St. Andrew looks like. And Spanish Town Road, a heavy flow of traffic, bumper to bumper and slowly moving. Head of Operations at the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, PSTEB, Superintendent Courtney Kubri, says the roadway was damaged over the weekend. We had to get the use of the tractor to fill out some holes and some areas that water had settled and all of that. That's why it is now drivable. In an effort to alleviate the traffic congestion, Chesterfield Drive was reopened temporarily to allow traffic coming from three miles to go onto Spanish Town Road. That measure, it is a very short-lived one, right? It is, I, I, I tell you, that the NWA was even contacted. It was an initiative solely on the part of the police. And those boulders are to be replaced just after the traffic has run off. However, motorists traveling from Chesterfield Drive onto Spanish Town Road still had challenges. Those using Chesterfield from Spanish Town Road that exits onto Marcus Garvey Drive and then to use the left of the bridge to travel under the underpass, about 150 meters of that road surface is also damaged as well. So we have damage to the road surface here and damage to the road surface there. As a result of that, you have the slow movement of traffic along this corridor. In the meantime, Superintendent Kubri says a team was deployed across the corporate area to facilitate a smooth traffic flow. The Assistant Commissioner in charge of PSEB, a SSP, three superintendents including myself, five deputy superintendents, six inspectors and 100 and 83 others are deployed across the corporate area, cheating with traffic management. So we expect motorists to get, you know, a smooth flow, especially in areas where we do have damage to the road network. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. The Election Monitoring Committee of the People's National Party, PNP, is to meet today to work out strategies for the reconciliation of factions within the party following the bruising presidential contest. The contest culminated in Saturday's election in which Dr. Peter Phillips defeated Peter Bunting to retain presidency of the PNP. Delegates were almost split equally, with Dr. Phillips receiving 1,427 votes to Mr. Bunting's 1,351. PNP General Secretary Julian Robinson yesterday evening told our news center that the Secretariat will now have to work on restoring unity within the party. So... You know, I think after we meet tomorrow, we'll have a clearer idea on the approach and the specific steps that will be undertaken to try and bring everybody back together and have a united party going forward. It was bitter from the start when Mr. Bunting announced he would challenge for the presidency. Many party members argued that the challenge was ill-timed and could cost the PNP in the next general election. In addition, the, the, the lead-up to Saturday's election was characterized by allegations of vote-buying and bullying from both sides. The party General Secretary Dr. Horace Chang says he's working to get the party election ready by November. He says all candidates are now being finalized and should be in place when the party holds its annual conference in November. Dr. Chang says the preparation will ensure the party is ready for whenever time Prime Minister Andrew Holness decides to call a general election. That won't work and we should be ready to roll. The job is to give the Prime Minister the option to be ready to call in time for the new year, which means in time from February onwards, that's normal political thinking for the party's point of view. Because, you know, February through to December, which is the, the maximum length of time you'd go. So we need to be ready during that time. I will be ready by that time. We expect to be ready in November and leave it to the Prime Minister to discretion. The next general election is constitutionally due in 2021. However, there has been speculation the Prime Minister could announce one way ahead of that deadline. 
Meanwhile, a call is being made to President of the People's National Party, Dr. Peter Phillips, to take concerns raised by supporters of his defeat, challenger Peter Bunting, seriously following Saturday's internal election. St. Anne Northwest Member of Parliament, Dr. Dayton Campbell, made the call while speaking on the morning agenda on Power 106 this morning. The call comes in the wake of a statement by Dr. Phillips dismissing claims of a split in the party. Dr. Campbell, who was the campaign manager for Bunting's Rise United team, noted that Dr. Phillips won by 76 votes, and this is, in, this is an indication that supporters are deeply divided. He says the ability of the PNP to win the next general election will depend heavily on how it treats with the concerns expressed by delegates. 76 votes really is 39 persons, you know. If you take 39 of the persons that voted for them and put them to us, we'd have won by two. So the election was really determined by just 39 persons. I mean, I get up <laughs> ever so often short the course of the night thinking, you know, how we could have gotten that addition on 39 votes. But, but, but such is the nature of politics, you know. Um, I think the PNP is better off for us having challenged. The fact that we came so close as well, it sends a signal that, you know, pay attention to what these guys were saying, incorporate some of these things. So it, it is how we treat with the next couple of days into weeks that will determine whether or not the party will be viable in the next election. And at least two political commentators believe that the challenge for the leadership of the People's National Party was a good move. However, they believe that the timing was wrong. Speaking on TVJ's Smile Jamaica this morning, political analysts Richard Crawford and Kevin O'Brien Chang say Peter Bunting's challenge was a good way to re-energize the base of the party. The results that we might have been surprised about show something very clearly. You know. Kevin is right. There's a traditional <coughs> safe leadership <coughs> crew that supported Peter. There's another group of the younger, more vibrant people who wanted Bunting to be the leader. So there, there, there are these two important segments in the party. Now they have to be brought together. There's no denying that. For Mr. Chang, he says the proverbial olive branch needs to be extended to Mr. Bunting. Remember, you know, Dr. Phillips asked Mr. Bunting to be campaign manager, mayor or something. Bring him back in. Yes, he clearly knows how to run a campaign. And I tell you something, this defeat has been is a defeat with honor for Mr. Bunting. It yeah. positions him now as a clear heir apparent. Yeah. And if Dr. Phillips runs an election and loses, the, the Peter Bunting can say, look, I am the man. People are going yes, to say, say well, yeah. Peter is not going to be around much longer. Mm. Maybe this is his last hurrah. But for the People's National Party, for people to focus on them and believe in them and think they have substance, you have to pull so, Peter, so Peter, Peter Bunting as the heir apparent. And we now take a break here on the Midday News, but stay with us. More news after these messages. Welcome back. Continuing the news. Efforts to clamp down on car theft across the island by the Jamaica Constabulary Force are bearing fruit. TVJ News understands that last Thursday, swift action by the St. Mary Police led to the recovery of three motor cars which were reported stolen. This includes a Toyota Mark X, an Axio, and a Nissan Tida. The Mark X was abandoned along the Cascade Main Road. The Tida abandoned on the, the Waterland attraction here in St. Mary, the Axio was being driven and was signaled to stop. The driver was signaled to stop. There were four persons on board. He, however, disobeyed the instructions of the police and sped away. Superintendent Morgan says the Axio was eventually abandoned in Gale. She told TVJ News that the close proximity of the two stolen vehicles suggests that the perpetrators were working together. The TIDA was re returned to its owner. However, the Mark X and the Axio are still in the possession of the police. The Axio in particular, it is still not known if it, is, if it was stolen or still not sure what the circumstances around this vehicle because it was the license plate on it is actually registered to a motor truck. So the police 
we're carrying out investigations and uh, we hope that you know some these vehicles will be re returned to their owners however she noted that they had started to scrap the mark x and the nissan tida motor cars Discontent is increasing within the membership of the Jamaica Air Traffic Controllers Association, JATCA, over unsettled wage claim with the government. JATCA President Kurt Solomon warned that if a resolution is not found soon, industrial action is inevitable. The group met late last month with Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark. However, Mr. Solomon says that meeting did not advance the discussions and things are now uncertain. Coming out of the meeting with the minister, we are even more unhappy. We accepted the explanation from him about the government's position, but we cannot accept that the past two plus years of negotiations was really a waste. So we are expecting at this moment, um, because we have put our cards on the table, we have treated with the situation as if it was a negotiation, and we have asked now that the ministry come to us with a better offer. A failure to do so will obviously result in us now um, coming to action, and that's just our final position. Mr. Solomon says the outcome of the meeting has left the members even more agitated. We had an emergency general meeting last week. We brought the news to our members. They were disappointed. They were upset. As you can imagine, I mean, Negotiations is an activity that involves all of us and for our group in particular that is trying to build the service after it was almost damaged beyond repair. I mean, and it takes all of us. I mean, you can just imagine waiting for so long to hear um, that even just the developmental issues would be treated with, with some urgency. They were really discarded. I mean, it, it's really a very disappointing situation. But if we have to take action, we have to take action. We're going to have to do what we have to do. We're going on to news in sports. As the Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association gets ready to name the country's team to the IWAF World Championships in Doha, there may be a few selection dilemmas in their way. This is TVJ's Primetime Sports Road to Doha 2019. TVJ Sports understands that the J3As will meet this coming week to decide on the final set of athletes who will represent the country at the 17th IWF World Championships in Doha, Qatar, starting later this month. But as they do so, there may be a few selection dilemmas they might be met with. 2015 World Champion Daniel Williams did them a favor by earning the wild card for the 100 meter hurdles after a fiasco at the national trials resulted in the race being aborted. With Williams' win, the association must now decide the other three athletes who will join her in the event in Doha based solely on a current form. The men's 400 meters is also another tricky proposition as only national champion Demish Gay from the top three has a world champs qualifying standard. Rasheen MacDonald, who was fourth at the national trials, has also run faster than the 45.30 entry standard this season, but the likes of Akeem Bloomfield, who is now the country's fastest athlete over the distance, didn't compete in the one-lap event at June's trials. There's also the question of who will replace Brianna Williams, who finished third in the women's 100, but has since returned a positive test for a banned substance. Junior Smith finished fourth and could join Olympic champions Shelley and Fraser Price and Elaine Thompson as individual entrants in the event, while Natalia White, Natasha Morrison and Simone Facey could make up the relay pool. And with the addition of the mixed 4x4 relay, which will be contested for the first time at the track and field showpiece, the association will also have to consider which athletes it will select to make up that pool. But whatever team the association selects, head coach Maurice Wilson says it's up to the coaching staff to help them get the best possible results for the country. Well, that's the responsibility of coaches. You know. When things look dim and when everybody would have turned away from these um, athletes, we have to be there for them because we know that over time it is our responsibility to get the performances to where they used to be or to, 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 to even better performances. And, and so we are steadfast in our confidence in these athletes. Live and exclusive coverage of the 2019 World Championships will be on TVJ, TVJ Sports Network, 
and onespotmedia.com with extensive radio coverage on Hits 92 FM from September 27 to October 6. That was TVJ's Primetime Sports Road to Doha 2019. And that's the midday news. Join us at 7 for the primetime news package. On behalf of the news sports and production teams, I'm Herman Green. Good afternoon.